few people recently asking me about the car, some updates and um, just questions in general, so I thought I'd make a bit of a video sort of going over the whole thing. Um, I've had the car for about, oh, about seven or eight years now. Uh, it's been through a few different versions in that time. Um, this is the fourth iteration. Um, a bit of a mishap with version three out of Malala. Bent the whole front end, smashed the radio to support the pieces, and yeah, thought I'd do a uh, quick 12 month freshen up that turned into three years and pouring more money than I care to admit into it. Alright, so the uh, first and easiest thing to talk about is probably the exterior and the, uh, the aero that I've got on the car. Obviously judging by the window banner, it took a fair bit of uh, inspiration from the mid-2000s drift muscle sort of era. Uh, big fan of the GP Sports 180SXs, so sort of tried to piece together my own uh, poor man's version of that. The front bar is a um, FRP Type X copy from uh, Origin Ladder. It's modified it slightly up the top here cut that out and refiberglassed it in. Uh, a couple of extra vents I added in the front there. Um, got some canards and side splitters just to give it a bit more of an aggressive look. So running an M Sports bonnet that I uh, basically snapped either side and uh, refiberglassed back together so I was glad not to lose that. It's got Origin Type 3 55mm front fenders, got super made fender canards, GP sport side skirts, um, so it's got the Origin 55mm rear fenders, um, turns out they weren't as wide as I was expecting them to be so I had to chuck a um, bolt on flare on there to get the rear track matching the front, um, it's just an eBay jobby that one, nothing special. Uh, coming around the rear, got a Origin Attack Line rear bumper. It's got a year ass GT wing uh, with their drag mount kit. And yeah, um, so we should probably talk about the wheels that are on the thing. Uh, so you've got CST Hyper Zeros on the rear, uh, 18 by 9.5 plus 15. You've got some Wed Sports uh, TCO5s from memory, and a 17 by 9, and I can't quite remember the offset of those. I think they're a plus 11. Um, I suppose we'll go over the engine and driveline setup. Got a uh, built SR20 in here. Um, a decent little setup. Um, it's running a uh, forged bottom end, H beam rods, um, CP 87mm 9 to 1 pistons. Uh, with the head work that's going on and whatnot. Um, the compression ratio ended up being just shy of 9 to 1. Uh, so the top end run in uh, HKS Step 2 cams, uh, 264, uh, 264 duration, 12 millimeter lift. Um, it's got standard valves, it's got Supertech valve springs and retainers. Um, had a bit of a uh, combustion chamber work done on it. Um, opened up the chambers a little bit, try and uh, slow the flame front down. Combustion chambers being opened up ended up dropping the um, compression ratio a bit due to increasing the CC of the head. Uh, so we ended up taking 
0.8 of a mil off the head, running a 1.2 millimeter HKS gasket. Um, and yeah, arrived the compression ratio somewhere, it was just shy of 9 to 1 from memory. So it was about 8.9 or something like that. So it's running a Kinogawa TDO 620G. Nothing too crash hot there. Um, a little, uh, I don't know if you can see that down there. It's running an Apexi cast high mount manifold. Um, these things are hen's teeth. I've not found another one for sale or even seen photos of another one on the internet. I'm pretty stoked to be running that. Um, it's been slightly modified. It was a um, IHI RX6 flange, um, but we've had a T3 flange welded onto it. Uh, let's see if we can see down there. Also running a trust 50 millimeter wastegate. Um, got the hybrid S13, S14 rocker cover. Little AM breather lines around, running down to a uh, vibrant catch can down there that's plumbed back to the intake. Um, got a Koyo uh, N flow radiator or a triple pass. Standard fan shroud here, but if we can have a look around the back, it's got a um, spall thermo fan in there. Thing works wonders, draws an absolute ridiculous amount of air through, uh, and get this thing up to you know, over 90 degree water temps, and switch the fan on, and it gets back down to you know, 65 to 70 degrees in about a minute or two. So it works pretty damn well. Um, also got this custom shroud here that I made up. Let's see if we can get a good look at it through the front here. It's fully seals in the intercooler and the um, radiator there so it's a proper sealed airflow right through the front and the fan has no option but to suck it all through um, so what else we got here HKS super sequential uh, got a low frequency insert in it just so it doesn't chirp off its tits um, so it has more of a traditional blow off valve sound so Probably can't see it down in there, but it's got the Tome oil filter relocator block. The Grex thermostatic block up here with the HKS filter on it. Uh, just runs down to a pretty generic oil cooler down in there. Um, so we got the coolant header tank here as well. Um, these are a bit of a hard thing to fit in an engine bay and they always look pretty ridiculous to be honest. Um, trying to get the hoses sort of routed all over the place without it looking like shit's a bit of a challenge. So jammed the uh, overflow tank up in that corner there. Um, this hose here I couldn't really do too much with. Probably could have gone under that pipe there maybe but would have made coming up over the radiator a bit tricky. Um, this one from the uh, water outlet here runs across the front with the cast wiring there, a couple of P-clamps. Um, so tried to hide this one, because this one always looks like crap when it comes up over the inlet pipe there. Um, so I've got a bit of a protective, well it's heat shield basically, um, over it there so it doesn't get cut up under the inlet manifold and uh, just feeds through there, comes out between the runners there nice and neat. Uh, fuel set up on the thing, it's it's running E85, so we've got 1000cc injectors in it. Got a um, pretty generic fuel rail for the time being. It's one of the things I want to upgrade eventually. Um, really wouldn't mind one of those, uh, the Saad fuel rails, but it's later down the track. Uh, so it's twin entry. So um, let's see if we can get it here. Got the, um, oh, where is the bloody thing? Oh, there it is. So a fuel pressure gauge here in line, uh, comes up there through the middle and it tees off just down in there, it's a bit hard to see and then it goes under the runners either side of the rail, one there and then one there, just trying to keep everything as neat as possible. Um, then the return comes out the middle, down and around there to the uh, sad regulator. Yeah, trying to keep everything looking nice while not being too much of a prick to work on. Yeah, 
think that's about it for the engine. Um, last time it was on the dyno, it made uh, 299 kilowatts, uh, about 700 newton meters of torque, at about 22 psi. So, um, yeah, gets up and goes. Only had a chance to drive it once this year before uh, the world fell apart. But um, yeah, sort of decided I uh, want to drive like a bit of a meathead and blew the gearbox to pieces. So that was pretty fun. Um, speaking about the gearbox, it's running a RB25 gearbox. Um, after I blew it up, I bought another second-hand gearbox that was out of a 32 GDR. Um, swapped all the gear set over uh, it turns out the output shafts are different lengths the 32s have the uh, transfer case on the rear so took the um, main shaft and all the gears out of that and put it into the 25 box so should have uh, slightly better ratios now I hope than the, than the 25 box the um, 25 box has a rather short second and a big jump to third so hopefully the GDR box is a little bit nicer to drive um, yeah, the clutch-wise, it's running a um, an ACS or Extreme 200 um, millimeter twin plate. Uh, it's rather aggressive. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of forgiveness on the old clutch kits. That one, um, going from a regular organic single plate clutch previously, um, you'd be quitting pretty aggressive on the left foot, and it'd just um, it'd take it. it. Wouldn't transmit too much shock through the drive line. Twin plate, on the other hand, is rather aggressive. Um, as soon as you give it half a clutch kick, it just shocks everything. Um, so I ended up putting a Tilton clutch delay valve in. Um, probably not going to be able to see that down here, but I haven't been able to drive with that yet, so we'll see how that goes. Um, got a couple of different orifice sizes for it, so see if that makes much sort of a difference. Hopefully, um, just a bit of a cushion there for the rest of the drive line and. I don't want to go exploding gearboxes every time I drive it. Yeah, that's about it for engine and drive on. Alright, so probably the biggest standout in the interior. Bright gold roll cage in there. Um, it's a full weld-in CAMS approved roll cage by Rex Kelway. Um, does amazing work. Best value for money out there, I reckon. Um, Got single side intrusion bars there, uh, A pillar bars, a bit hard to see, gusseted to the uh, A pillar there, and through the dash, double crossbar, uh, harness bar in the back there. And he's also gusseted the cage to the B pillar there, and then also up to the roof. Um, all TIG welded, amazing quality. Could not be happy with the roll cage to be honest. Uh, value for money is next level. Um, as for seats, got a bride fix back in here. Uh, it's one of the older ones, so I just sort of patch up the side bolster there. It's looking a bit worse for wear again, but yeah, the old cloth fabric doesn't really stand the test of time, but they do look good and a uh, nice feeling seat as well. Uh, passenger seat, we've got a bride bricks in there, little velo harnesses, um, I can't remember what brand this one is, it's just a pretty generic one, um, did want to get HPI harnesses for it, but um, they'll come later down the track, and drive the car a few more times before I throw any more cash at it. Uh, what have we got, steering wheel, got a, uh, chuck that on there. So, just got a uh, Nardi Gara. Um, always been pretty partial to big steering wheels, so got a 360 mil there. Quite like it. Uh, doesn't feel like an arcade racer when you're driving the car. Um, everything running through the uh, Power FC there. Uh, it's just a um, base model one it's not a djetro or anything fancy like that uh, it doesn't have a inbuilt boost controller either so we've got the uh Gretti profec there um, a p 
Pixie uh, EL2 gauges, the essentials, just water temp, oil temp and oil pressure there, all the important stuff. Try and keep an eye on them, but uh, yeah, you know how things get when you're driving. Um, one thing I always like to try with, keep the interiors relatively neat, um, even though it is a uh, relatively gutted drift car, didn't want to look like a, uh, a sack of shit in here, so um, never been a huge fan of the toggle switches with the missile covers on them and whatnot, so I want to try and keep everything as clean as possible. Uh, we've got this Narva switch panel here, which is actually advertised for caravans of all things. Um, it's got nice LED rocker switches and LED lights above that let you know when they're on or off. Uh, comes pre-wired, all you need to do is hook your powers and grounds up to it and uh, send them where you want. It's a pretty nice little package. Uh, made a little frame up so it fits in there where the uh, stereo and everything used to go. Try and keep everything looking rather neat and purposeful. Uh, Nismo shift knob, pretty standard. Um, standard cable handbrake. Uh, I want to try and keep that thing as long as I can. Uh, the cables are getting quite stretched now, but keep persevering with it. I like the feel of it. Um, yeah, try and stay away from the um, big gaudy looking handbrake levers for as long as I can. Um, yeah, thought about to modify the door cards here for the roll cage. Uh, not my neatest work, but does the job. Yeah, um, so we've got everything wired up here through this switch, so not having a key in the car, obviously, it's um, be quite easy to run away with the bloody thing. So we've got this isolator here that um, separates the whole uh, ignition, basically. Um, so that basically acts as your ignition barrel and your key. Um, that thing can come out of there, and then there's no chance of turning anything on or starting the car without that. So chuck him in there, and uh, so you see all the uh, switch panel lights up once that's on. You've got your uh, regular accessories, so that'll uh, turn the gauges on, and your indicators and parkers and whatnot will work. The uh, boost controller will also turn on. Once we turn the ignition switch on, power of C, ECU and everything else fires up. Cluster turns on. That's going to let us start the car now if we wanted to. Yeah, just trying to keep everything as neat as possible. Um, it's still got a full standard body harness in it and everything. Um, engine harness is all factory Nissan still, so yeah, it's all getting a bit old now, but still doing the trick for the time being. Um, still got functioning power windows as well, which is pretty handy. Uh, yeah, power windows work. Um, what else do we have in here? Oh, a bit of a gimmick, but um, the old electric mirrors still work as well. Fire that up. Okay. Well, that still works and adjusts. It's a bit clanky and noisy, but uh, yeah, does the trick. And uh, it's still fold in as well. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the interior. Nothing too special going on in here. Um, yeah, super basic fuel system at the moment. Um, it will be getting upgraded eventually. But it's just a single uh, Walbro in tank. I think it's a 460 litres per hour ethanol rated fuel pump. Um, I haven't had any surge issues, but I've only driven the car once. So, see how that goes. Um, I do want to upgrade to a um, surge tank and whatnot, but it's later down the track. Yeah, let's fire the thing up. Let's hear it running.
so what's next? Um, the suspension's probably the last thing. Um, front's pretty easy to see. So we'll get down in here. Um, just running uh, BC BR coilovers at the moment. Uh, they feel pretty damn good. Um, they move pretty well. Everything feels pretty sweet with them. Uh, nothing crazy spring rate wise, just um, eights and sixes. It's pretty standard stuff. Um, extended lower arm there. Uh, also, a bit hard to see in here, but probably not going to be able to see it but um moved the LCA pickup out and up as well so it's got extra track at the LCA pickup point and um, moved up as well to try and help with bumps to level the arm out and whatnot um, it's running power by max knuckles those things are bloody amazing um, never driven a car with wires fab or anything like that but I couldn't imagine ever needing more than that knuckles got to give you um, yeah, things ridiculous. Um, it's got too much steering as it is, so it's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, cross member's been modified as well. I uh, did that myself. Moved forward about 30 millimeters and moved up about three millimeters. Try and correct um, over centering and all of that when you're at full lock. Um, to see down in there. It's also got um, S14 tie rod ends and Power by Max upgraded tie rods. So, yeah, pretty damn beefy those things. So, yeah, so that's about it for the front. Nothing too special going on there. Pretty standard stuff. Um, cool. Let's, uh, jack the rear end up and get the wheel off so we can see the rear. Look at this uh, rear suspension set up here. Nice chunky old spacer to get the uh, wheel track matching the front. Um, nothing too crazy going on in here. Just got the BCBRs back here as well. Six kilo spring. Um, I am running relatively low on the dampening settings last time I drove the car. Um, do want to have a bit of a play around with that. The car was really rear biased in the way that it transferred weight. It had, um, as soon as you got on throttle, it would just really dump the ass in and um, felt like there wasn't a lot of weight on the front at all. So, I have a bit of play around with dampening settings and um, also sway bars in the future. Um, this thing isn't running a rear sway bar at the moment, it's the first time I've ever driven a car without one. Um, so yeah, I do want to chuck a rear sway bar back in here and um, have a play around with the uh, different thickness between the front and the rear, a few different settings and see what works and what doesn't. Um, also play around with the dampening as well, might stiffen up the rear next time I drive the car a little bit. Um, so we've got a S14 rear subframe in here with um, GK Tech brace kit welded through it. Um, Standard lower arms, standard S13 rear brakes, nothing special. Project new shoes, it's a full ZSS rear arm kit. There we go. Toe arm, camber arm, and traction rods. Yeah, seem to do the trick pretty well. Uh, the exhaust that I built myself. 
um, not the craziest thing in the world, just a gasless MIG welded um, 3 inch stainless, nothing too fancy. Yeah, so that's the rear end, pretty basic really. Uh, if you can really see it, it's still running a 6 bolt diff, so um, yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Eh? If the box doesn't blow, that'll probably be the next thing, that or the drive shafts. So, fingers crossed I can um, sort my driving out and let all that live a little bit longer. too crazy it's not super soft in the back end like I said still got 6k springs so a lot of people are going down to fives and fours these days so this thing seems like it really moves to the rear as it is even with six kilo springs and the the track as wide as it is obviously you got a fair bit more leverage on the exact same spring there having the wheels so much further out so it already feels pretty soft so, yeah rear ends pretty sorted really uh, it's just set up play around with a few little things and uh, maybe wheel alignment as well once that's all a little bit more dialed in. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the rear end. Oh, so maybe a couple of little things that I forgot with the engine side of things. Um, Pepsi air filter there, nothing too special. Uh, Z32 airflow meter. Pretty run of the mill setup, really. Um, so, running AN lines on all of the uh, boost control stuff here. Um, solenoid up there. Uh, running to the top and bottom of the wastegate as well. Try and um, maximize the amount of boost control there. So, Basically just going for reliability with all of that. Don't want to be having backing lines pop off your wastegate. Uh, especially with as much money as I've got in this thing. I'd hate for something silly like that to cost me an engine. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, the top end of the engine. The um, Also running brand new rocker arms throughout the whole head. Uh, OEM. Wouldn't really mess around with anything else there. They're not that expensive and it's not worth running 30 year old pieces of shit that have grooves worn in them or whatnot. Um, just throw them in the bin and get new ones. Um, and same with the lifters. Um, you know, you got 30 year old lifters that have got questionable service history in them most likely because uh, let's face it, a lot of people don't really service these as much as they should and then you sit the thing on six and a half, seven thousand RPM and wonder why your rocker arms all fall out and smash to pieces. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's got brand new OEM Nissan lifters throughout as well, and um, just going to make sure that the rocker arms are set perfectly. Uh, you know, quite a few old engine builders out there that run by the theory that you know it's got hydraulic lash adjusters. You don't need to set the clearances, but uh, I tell you, there's plenty of these getting around there with rocker arms flying out of them. So it obviously matters. Spend the time, set it up right, get your rocker arms as even as you can, and uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, yeah, so that's about it, I think. Nice Spitfire coil packs, nothing too fancy. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the car, I think. Um, I don't know if this kind of thing's enjoyable to anybody or if anybody's still watching at this point in time, but uh, if you are, thanks. And uh, yeah, see you later.